Olga, how are you? I'm okay. And you? <laughs> Good. The sun's out. It's 90 degrees here today. I'm looking out at the beach, so it's it's good. It's wonderful. Here in Moscow, it's a little different. It's very cold and rainy, and it's been like this for a long, long time already. So it's very unusual summer here. So. Have you taken your dog out yet today? Yes, I did. It's so I the only, that, that's the only thing I can do, actually. So I would bet you this is probably the longest break you've had with concerts probably in 15 years. Is that accurate? Yes, maybe more than that. <laughs> Does it feel really weird? It is very weird. But, you know, I, um, I have so much stuff to do. Uh, I'm always keeping myself busy. That uh, I have a lot of music around me. Um, of course, I'm practicing and then... I have my students um, from Manhattan School. I still teach them. Then I'm uh, judging a few competitions online. Uh, and then um, I'm just, you know, I have so many things to think about that uh, and work on uh, that I, I feel like, you know, I, I'm very much uh, staying, uh, you know, on top of things. And of course, with the family, it's a great thing to, to see them uh, for so long. Yeah, the only thing I, I feel like missing is traveling. <laughs> well, how are you handling, uh, who gets to use the piano each day? Um, are you have to have a sign up sheet for practice time? <laughs> you know, uh, we are somehow managing, uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, I know that uh, Vladik, my son needs to um, catch on some things and then he's practicing. And then if I need a, a, a piano, um, then he is going uh, to the um, electronic, uh, small electronic keyboard because I'm, I'm here um, with my parents staying here in Moscow and uh, they didn't uh, use this piano for a long time. So there, there is a lot of uh, things to be fixed. Uh, so that, that's uh, also a, a little problematic right now because we can't find a piano tuner. Uh, you know, I mean, we can't find, but no one would come because we, we still have currents in here. Nothing is open yet. It seems to be a little bit of a curse because you still have not worked with Joanne Folletta. I think. I know. So this would have been the third time that you were going to work with her and things had been canceled, not with the festival, but with other things. So your debut with Joanne would have been in May for our Beethoven Festival. And obviously it's canceled, so... I, I was looking forward so much for this concert. Had things not closed down, were you playing a fair amount of Beethoven this year for the anniversary? Yes, uh, uh, and you know, uh, I'm practicing actually right now for... Um, I have this project in Brazil in the end of the year uh, for all Beethoven concerti. And uh, I played uh, number one, number three, number five, and number two and four... Um, I'm learning, I'm, I'm almost done um, with it. So, um, and of course I'm playing Choral Fantasy. So we are doing this with Roberto Minchuk uh, there in Sao Paulo. Um, and uh, I play a lot of Beethoven, of course, for the recitals. Obviously you play a lot of the Russian repertoire and obviously we've been a lot of Beethoven this year, but you have to talk about the Gershwin. So two summers ago, I got to hear you play Rhapsody in Blue out in Colorado. Was that your first Rhapsody in Blue? No, uh, I played uh, Rhapsody in Blue before um, uh, many times, actually. Um, actually, not that many times in, in uh, United States, somehow, you know. Uh, but definitely many times in Russia and in Europe. It's just such a great piece, you yeah. know. I'm playing this as much as I can, but somehow, as you said, uh, a lot of um, presenters want to hear my Russian repertoire. Of course, all Rachmaninoff concerti, Tchaikovsky. And then um, also I, I just learned a Scrabbing concerto. Um, it's always great to perform Russian music, of course, but Gershwin, you know, Rachmaninoff loved Gershwin so much, you know, and Rachmaninoff actually took so much from that, um, you know, a great uh, jazzy details uh, which Gershwin had in his music and in, uh, in Rachmaninoff's, uh, even Rhapsody at Timbe Paganini, you can hear it, and in his um, concerto number four and um, uh, last uh, composition, Symphonic Dance, it, you, ca you can hear that jazzy element. So you, when we were talking a couple of weeks ago, we were 
planning on doing this. You mentioned it would be fun. There's some interesting photos and mementos in your apartment there that kind of trace your family history in music. I don't know if those, oh, those close by. You... I, I actually have a few pictures of my great grandmother uh, here next to me. I'll show you now. Um, she was a mezzo soprano and uh, she was performing in Kharkov Opera Theater, which is in Ukraine. And, um, but she, she, she was performing all over Russia and she was a good friend with Rachmaninoff and Rachmaninoff was accompanying her in many concerts and in his uh, books of his memoirs, two books. Um, he, there is, uh, you know, written the dates and the places uh, where they were doing it. Um, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's so special because she was performing a lot of his uh, songs, you know, Rachmaninoff songs, and he was accompanying her. Uh, it's so special for me because this genius, um, touched a little bit of, of my family. Uh, I'll show you, I have, um, let me see if you can uh, see that. Um, this, you see this, this is her. And uh, this, she is um, here. She is here uh, in uh, opera um, Mermaid of uh, Dargamyshsky, you know, Russian composer Dargamyshsky. That's fantastic. And her scores of Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto, which is right here as well, they're very old, if you can see that. It's a her, it's the first copy of Rachmaninoff's third. I played it so many times, like you can see how bad it is already, you see? It's like really parts, parts of it, you know? Um, every every piece, uh, every page is just uh, worn out already. So this is really a first uh, edition. You see how beautiful everything is hand handwritten. It's 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 in French because that time it's, it's it was uh, very uh, fashionable, you know. And um, I am keeping it here because. Um, you know, I can't already travel with it. It's just falling apart, you know? But um, I played uh, this, this um, on this course, I actually learned the concerto. I'll show you the cadenza, a cadenza of the first movement. There is so much, uh, so much notes. I always show this, like this, this page is great. Look at this. It's like so many notes, right? You look at this big page and it's like all, it's like million, million, and then it just continues with a, a little small one. It's like really, it's, it's incredible. I always keep it here with my parents. So they kind of like guard, guard it here. That's a fantastic little uh, legacy and uh, connection going back two generations. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I know I have more pictures. I just, you know, couldn't find it like uh, that quick um, because, you know, my parents always have uh, a lot of memorabilia, you know, from my grand grandparents. Um. Good. Well, I know that our ticket buyers and supporters are really waiting for us to re-announce the schedule. So we're going to have a lot of people that are excited and waiting to hear some great music. So. Yes, I, I really, I, I can't wait. I think it will be so powerful to meet again and to play and share this music together. I'm sure a lot of people, including me, will be in tears, you know, in happy tears. Well, make sure you stay safe and uh, tell your family hello, and we look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thank you so much, Rob, and you too, and everyone in the festival. Yes, same. Please stay healthy. Okay, goodbye. Bye.